So my story starts a long time ago. I was a vague child. Now, that might seem like a very odd way to describe a child, but that would be apropos because I was an odd child, too. I had a really vibrant family. I was loved. I had strong women in my life, but I had no sense of self. I wasn't particularly interested in anything, and I wasn't particularly interesting to anyone, which might explain why I didn't have many friends. And if I did, they kind of came and went. It turns out that I wasn't perky enough to be part of the chipper club. I wasn't smart enough to be part of the smart club. I didn't have enough fashion or confidence to be in the popular club. I wasn't athletic, I wasn't musical, and on and on. I could not discern how it was that people got a personality. I couldn't figure out how to cultivate it, I couldn't figure out how to excavate it, I couldn't figure out how to uh, uh, incantate it. But I wanted to be like everybody else other than me. There were times where I would trot out these sort of gregarious personalities, take them out for a spin to see if maybe I could adopt this way of contributing to the world. It doesn't really work. You can't keep it going for the long haul. But it actually made me feel so bad that I had to go to these disingenuous lengths to try and fit in proving over and over that the more I tried to fit in, the more troublesome I made my life. I was becoming not just vague as I moved into adolescence. I was now becoming vague and lonely and lost. The only group that I knew that I had membership in and belonged to was my own family. Until. Until that all changed. On February 17th, in 1983, when I was just 16 years old, I gave birth to a baby boy. Lonely lost, and vague, are the gateway feelings to teen pregnancy. And meeting this baby, for the first time in my life, and in his life, I was pretty convinced that I now had an identity. I was pretty convinced that I was a mother. Now, not because I had just birthed this creature, because that I could, I could, in fact, just be a teenager that just had a baby. What I was feeling was deeper and was more real. And it was proven out by two thoughts. The first one was kind of sweet and fleeting and ordinary. I thought he was the most beautiful baby I had ever seen. And I quickly reasoned that every mother thinks that her baby is the most beautiful baby she'd ever seen. But from somewhere, deep in the recesses of my mind, I heard this certain voice say, but maybe he actually is. Oh, and I felt it all through me. But it was the second thought. It was actually more heartbreak than thinking. That convinced me. Because I had to confess to this wiggling, fleshy, pink creature of my own making that I didn't really think this through very well. And that this doesn't look very good for us. I'm really young, I'm really uneducated, and I might be really dumb. 
I have $11 to my name. And I don't have any prospects of making any more anytime soon. And I'm not married, which means your hope of a father is not so good. And given the situation, I think that maybe my reputation is now a liability. But here's when I knew. Because like a force of nature came the most certain voice that I had ever, I had ever leveraged, I had ever thrown into the world. And I said to him, but don't worry, because I promise you, I promise you, I will make this right. I will do whatever I have to do. I'll figure it out, I promise you. And in that moment, I was invented right here. So I would tell you that I hadn't imagined that maternal instinct was going to hit like an epiphany. I had waited forever for, for some sense of something. And here, apparently, it was living deep inside me, just waiting for this moment. In all the tours to birthing rooms and Lamaze classes, no one had ever thought to say that when you birth a baby, you will birth a mother. And it had not occurred to me ever that this unexpected life would give me mine. I have an identity. I'm a mother. I have a purpose through the gift of a promise. But none of us should confuse this comes with a pretty heavy stigma. And so if I thought that by having an identity and a sense of purpose that I would find my place in the world, it wasn't to be true at this point. It would be 10 more years, 16 years of isolation being odd, and 10 more years before I would ever have and fit in with a friend outside of the demographic of my family. Young people had different priorities. They lived different lifestyles that just weren't compatible with being a mother. And mothers with new babies that were maybe 10 or 15 years older than I was, First and foremost, they didn't want to pal around with teen mothers. And even if they did, even if they were gracious enough to, I didn't have enough life experience. I didn't have enough emotional intelligence to pull that off. And so, it was me and him. And it was enough. But I did not waste those 10 years. I had made a promise, and I had intended to keep it. I figured out my parenting style. I started college. I figured out that it was probably pretty important that I master ideas like strategy, focus, processing. I learned what my limitations were and what my strengths were. I figured out what I really actually loved to do. What was I like, instinctively wired to do? And I took my core competencies and tried to stretch to see how far could they go. I was asking myself in all those years, what am I the answer to? I focused on big strategies and small tactics so that I could honor my promise but I could measure my progress. I conquered fear one frightening event at a time. I started to adopt 
a code that I would live by for the rest of my life, one line at a time. I let myself have my accomplishments. They weren't like anybody else's my age. I celebrated my small victories. And I would tell you this when I look back, that girl, because she was just a girl, she's still to this day like the most remarkable hero to me because she had nothing, nothing at all, but the power of this mother's love and this security of knowing who she was to fuel her. She was long to stand, slow to fall, and she would never, never give in. She never gave up. And little by little, I was less and less and less lost. And I was less and less and less vague. And I was less and less and less alone. I was on my way, which is the glory of this true story. Those lonely, vague, lost years, coupled with those 10 years of me pushing, pushing, pushing the boundaries of my potential, it was as if they had forged together to make the woman that I am now, which turns out to have been the woman that I actually needed to meet as a child. It was as if those years were actually some kind of apprenticeship to the gods of fate and sacrifice, because this is the most fascinating part. My unique skill is that I give people their gifts, their identity, their purpose, their values, their place in the world, their way of contributing, their position. What does that say to us? But by the virtue of mere courage, I became answer to my own prayer. I would tell you that I have waited all my life to be the woman that I am now. And that's what brings me here to this red spot. Because I know, lonely, lost, and vague, I can tell you that the world is turning out more and more lonely, lost, and vague people. We do not need that flavor of people. When we don't know who we are, we get into trouble. This is not the time for any of us to settle for lesser versions of who and how we were intended to be. The times might be uncertain, but you should never be. Put in the time and do the work. You, inside of every one of you, just like it was inside of me, is this amazingly unique gift that when it flows through your core competency, will be like anybody else's way of doing it. And it will be the answer to one of those wicked problems. But if you shut it off, neglect it, sacrifice it, then you will literally rob the world of your contribution and the answer. You will also rob yourself of the most amazing experience in the world, and that being superseding what you ever imagined you can do. And because of that baby, I have superseded what anybody ever thought I could do. And if you shut it off, you will deprive yourself of an unexpected